my wife and I are moving into this family home. Anyone who doesn't belong here, get out now. When my husband said that, I couldn't help but burst into laughter. Don't you guys know? My name is Amber. I'm a 27 year old marketing executive. I've been working for the same company for five years since I graduated. I've been given a lot of responsibility now and lead a busy life. Every day is challenging, but I feel a sense of fulfillment. I have another reason to strive harder. That is my boyfriend, Ted. He's also my colleague who works at the same office as me and is one year my senior. When I joined the company, he became my mentor and that's how we started to get closer. At first, it was just a typical colleague relationship. Around the time I got used to my work, he started to show signs of being interested in me as a woman and began making advances. Well, maybe he was waiting for me to become independent. The truth is, I was secretly attracted to him. So, I was thrilled when he confessed his feelings to me. By the time I turned 25, in my third year as a career woman, we officially started dating. We kept our relationship a secret from our colleagues. I was happy to see each other every day at work, and it was fun to go on dates after work or on weekends. It was delightful to have a good balance of work and private life. Our relationship was smooth sailing. Both of us were good at separating work and personal life, and we fulfilled our work responsibilities diligently. When both of us had a lot of work, We would stay late together and divide the tasks. I think we had a very good relationship in that sense. Then one day, someone at work found out that we were dating. It happened when we were walking together in the city on Valentine's Day. One of our co workers saw us holding hands. Well, even without that, It wouldn't be surprising for people to assume we were dating since it was such a day. Although they teased us at first, everyone was supportive of us, saying we were a well suited couple. It also helped that we both worked hard at our jobs without mixing our personal or professional lives. Since we produced good results, our superiors didn't say anything special about it. Thanks to that, we were able to continue our relationship smoothly. And then, after two years of dating, he finally proposed to me. No matter how I envision my future, I always see you by my side. So, I want you to walk through life with me. Will you marry me? Yes! I was overjoyed by his wonderful proposal so much. So that I almost fainted with happiness. I spent some time gazing at the engagement ring and couldn't stop smiling. We immediately went to meet each other's parents. First, we headed to his parents' house. Very nice to meet you. I'm Amber. Wow, you're beautiful. That's very lucky. Oh, you're too nice. No, no, you don't have to be modest. That's right, that's really lucky. Hey, you guys are putting me down too much, don't you think? His parents were very friendly, kind, and funny. Their smiles never faced, and we had a pleasant time from start to finish. Your parents are so nice. I'm glad to hear you say so. It's my turn now, isn't it? I'm nervous to meet your father. He's also nice, so you don't need to be nervous. Yeah, but I still do, you know. Will he approve of our marriage? I've already decided to marry you, so it doesn't matter if he does or doesn't. Besides, he's not the kind of person who would interfere with his daughter's marriage based on his own opinion. Well, 
That's good to hear. He seemed a little relieved, but still quite nervous. Then a few days later, the day came for us to visit my parents. Did you sleep last night? I know you're teasing me, right? I couldn't sleep much. I knew it. While having that conversation, we walked a few minutes from the nearest station to my parents' house. Welcome, guys. My mom greeted us at the front. It's nice to meet you. I'm Ted, the fiancé of Amber. Oh dear, you seem so nervous. Yeah, he is. When my mom and I started laughing, he joined in and seemed to ease his tension a little. As we headed to the living room, my dad was waiting for us. Ted introduced himself politely, just as nervous as before. My dad welcomed him with a genuine smile. Nice meeting you too. I'm new. Seeing him return the greeting warmly, Ted seemed to relax a bit. From there, we carried out our conversations cheerfully. Ted, please take good care of our daughter. Yes, of course I will. They shook hands firmly. I watched them with a smile, feeling delighted. Afterward, we proceeded with the preparations for the wedding. During that time, we had dinner with both families. There was a cheerful exchange between the parents from both sides. I noticed that there was another person from my side of the family who was meeting Ted and his parents for the first time. Hi, I'm Sarah. Let's finally meet you. You're a pretty good looking guy. That was how my sister introduced herself to Ted. She's five years younger than me and was a 22-year-old college student then. Since she was still in the student mindset, she tended to be a little hyped up. Ted had great people skills, so he easily clicked with her energy. Really? It's the first time someone said that to me. You're good with flattery. You're being too modest. You seem very nice, Ted. You found a great guy, Amber. I know. She had an outgoing personality and a light-hearted attitude. I thought she would have gone along well with someone like Ted, who was flexible. Since he was an only child and had no siblings, I wanted him to enjoy having a sister too. The dinner with the two families went without a hitch and ended pleasantly. A few months later, Ted and I held our wedding. We had many discussions and put a lot of effort into the planning. So we were quite pleased that it turned out exactly as we had hoped. Our colleagues and friends seemed genuinely happy for us, which made us feel truly blessed. Right after the wedding, we went on our honeymoon. And upon our return, we started our newlywed life. I was exalted to live with my beloved husband. Every morning when I woke up, he was by my side, and he was there when I went to sleep as well. Moreover, since we worked at the same company, we commuted together. It was like a dream to be with him all the time. As we were both busy, we shared the household chores. He liked cooking and was better than me. Even with simple dishes like mac and cheese or grilled salmon, he added a little extra touch, making them incredibly delicious. I felt fortunate to have a husband who was not only an excellent cook, but also brought me joy. We collaborated and handled chores while fulfilling our respective jobs. Our colleagues praised us as an admirable couple. When we were not working, we mainly indulged in our shared hobby of watching movies. We loved foreign films and enjoyed two or three a day. We watched a considerable number of movies throughout the year. What shall we watch next weekend? I often browse movie review websites during my lunch break. Our mail 
Catholic life was filled with simple happiness. However, around three years into our marriage, something happened that changed everything. It was on a weekend. When the doorbell rang, I thought it was a delivery, but the person standing outside the door was someone unexpected. It's been a long time, Amber. Sarah, why are you suddenly here? Can you let me stay here tonight? Huh? She showed up out of the blue. Not only that, she was asking to stay the night. I mean, it's a bit too sudden, don't you think? Please, I have nowhere else to go. What do you mean? I couldn't understand the meaning behind her words. And just then, Ted emerged from the living room. What's going on? Oh, Sarah, long time no see. Hey, Ted. Why are you guys talking at the door? Come inside. He then took her luggage and led her into the living room. You're so kind. I was hoping to end the conversation at the entrance. I was certain that if she came inside, she would have definitely stayed the night. Sarah, tell me the rest of what you were saying just now. What do you mean you have nowhere else to go? After graduating from university, she got a job and started living on her own. She should have had a place to go back to. I couldn't afford to pay the rent. How come? What about your job? Um, it didn't work out, so I quit. You had finally landed the job after struggling, and it lasted for three years, right? You could have continued for a bit longer. Oh, I quit that job a long time ago. I was working part time. Um, hold on. How long did you stay at your full time job? Mmm, until a bit before Thanksgiving. That's only about a month. Why didn't you tell me something so important? Don't get upset like that, will you? When she went to our parents first and told them everything, she was fiercely scolded by dad, then kicked out. Of course he'll be angry. How selfish are you? Okay, okay. Let's just calm down. She must have been going through a lot and made that choice. It's unfair to just get angry at her. Ted tried to take a neutral position, but that would have only made her take advantage. You're so cool. No one has ever stood up for me. Thanks. Well, it's not like... Please, Dad, let me stay here tonight. She pleaded him with Bambi eyes. Then, without hesitation, he said, Sure, why not? All I could do was exhale deeply in resignation. Yay, thank you. Exhilarated, she went to put her luggage in the guest room without asking. Huh? You're spoiling her. You think so? But we are siblings, so we have to help each other. He didn't seem to grasp my concerns. I knew she would have never wanted to leave our place. My intuition was right, and she stayed for a while. You are an amazing cook, Ted. Really? Thank you. Ted never asked her to leave, and they always seemed to enjoy their meals together. Even when I told her to leave soon, she wouldn't listen. When I spoke to Ted about it, he said it was lively and fun. I had no choice but to talk to my parents. They were so mad that they immediately came to our house. Sarah was taken aback by their sudden visit. Dad gave her a harsh scolding, which made her finally reflect on her actions. She decided to leave soon, and at last, I was going to be free from her. But then came the drama. I had just returned home from a three-day business trip. When I entered the house, Sarah's jackets were gone from the closet. There was no luggage in the guest room either. I thought she must have left while I was away. 
I went to the dining room and found a letter on the table. I expected it to be from her. I picked it up and was absolutely stunned when I read the contents. I'm sorry, Amber. Sarah's leaving, so I decided to go with her. You've got to be kidding me. I couldn't help but let out a small cry. I rushed to Ted's closet only to find it empty. My sister and my husband had eloped together. I called and messaged both of them several times to no avail. I crumbled down to the floor. They had been having an affair under my roof. He had chosen Sarah over me. All of those were like a kick in my gut, and I didn't think I could recover from the immense pain. I called my parents and asked them to come over right away, and also sought advice from the police. However, I was told that I couldn't find a missing person's report, and I lost hope of locating them. I found out that Ted had resigned from his job while I was on a business trip. And just like that, he disappeared from the office. Soon after, I received the divorce papers in the mail. I desperately tried to find them, but it seemed impossible. I reluctantly signed the papers and submitted them, pretending to be in complete stranger to my husband. I hoped that I'd never have to go through such a painful experience again. People around me sympathized with me, understanding how cruel Ted had been. Work became the only way to distract myself from the pain. I focused solely on my work from then on. Ten years passed in the blink of an eye. I was still working as hard as ever. Then one day, unexpected visitors showed up at my house. Hi Amber, we are back. We had nowhere else to go, so we came here. Unbelievably, Ted and Sarah appeared after ten years. I wondered what their intentions were. The house they came to was my parents. They shamelessly showed up without a trace of embarrassment. I took a deep breath. It's pointless for you to have come. They refused to listen to me and tried to rely on my parents. That will forgive us after ten years, don't you think? Ted's parents are still mad, so we couldn't go to their house. But my parents would be different. We'll move into this house. Anyone who doesn't belong here, get out now. When Ted said that, I couldn't help but burst into laughter. Don't you guys know? Mom and Dad have already retired to the countryside. So this house is in my name now. No way, it's not fair that you live here all by yourself. Who said I'm alone? You're not? Just then, my current husband emerged from the living room. Hey guys, I'm her husband. Just to let you know, I'm a police officer. Police? Not only surprised by the unexpected presence of my husband, but they were flustered upon learning about his profession. Um, I'm happy to see you doing well after all this time. Right, I'm relieved to see you well. Saying that, the two of them started backing away. Stop. If you guys want to live here, you can. Really? You're so sweet. It appeared that their simple-minded nature hadn't changed as they posed and delighted in my words. But only if you pay for the upcoming full renovation. That's impossible, obviously. Don't give us a false hope. You too had an affair, left the house on your own, and now you're back, yet you dare to say such a presumptuous things? I have suffered a lot because of your betrayal. I was that bitterness that fueled my determination, and now I become the VP at the headquarters. Seriously? You've risen the high? I kept working hard after you were gone. What about you guys? You quit your jobs, eloped, and now you're back. 
It's because we don't have any money, isn't it? Well, when confronted with the truth, they both hung their heads looking down. After they eloped, they worked part time to ends meet, but it was getting insufficient. Unable to pay the rent, they were finally evicted from the apartment. I'll fuck you up with a job if you want. Are you mocking us again? Enough already. Well then, there's a living job available, but. When I mentioned it, they eagerly took the bait. Really? Come on, tell us more. It appeared they were truly desperate. Alright, let me contact them. I made a phone call right away. They want you guys to come now. I'll drive, so let's go. Yes. My husband and I got into the car and took them to the location. It was a farmhouse where my parents and uncle lived. Could this be. Yep, Sarah. You, what are you doing showing your face here now? And you, I won't forgive you for betraying Amber. When we arrived, Dad approached the two of them in a rage. They covered in terror in his menacing look. My husband and I removed their belongings from the trunk and got back inside the car. What are you doing, Amber? Where are you going? We have no business here, so we are going home. Good luck with the farm work. Wait. We left them behind. They are now disciplined by my parents and uncle, enduring daily lectures and forced to do farm work. I hear they are mentally and physically exhausted with lifeless expressions on their faces. I truly think it serves them right. On the other hand, I am happily living with my husband. I intend to continue working through life with my reliable partner.